This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, members of the Invercargill Citizens Bowling Club march to the City Council to fight for their club. South Dunedin has acquired a new library and community centre. And a slip from a building, slide, building site closed Lakeside Road in Wanaka for most of today. Good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Members of the Invercargill Citizens Bowling Club marched to the City Council to fight for their club today. Club members were told last month that the lease on their hall on Deverin Street would not be renewed when it expires on March the 31st, 2018. Sharon Rees has the action. Don't sell our hall! Don't sell our hall was the message members of the Invercargill Citizens Bowling Club were delivering to the City Council today. Members were told on August 2nd that the council was considering selling both the hall and its neighbouring number 10 youth health centre to make way for redevelopment. The lady said they're not renewing our lease. We've got to be out of here by the 31st of March next year. They're going to build a medical centre on here, three storeys. They're taking us out, the hall next door and number 10. So today, club members made signs for an official march to city council. We're marching around to the City Council building asking for Richard King to come out and answer our questions regarding this hall. They want to sell it and take away probably the only outings that 90% of these elderly people have each week to get out and meet other people by coming here to bowl. The group marched just around the corner to City Council and were met by Chief Executive Richard King who invited them in out of the rain. Certainly for the bowling club and number 10, um, we made a judgment call and tried to give you adequate notice. I think for the bowling club it was something like eight months. And uh, we've no, had... No, Mr. No. King, we didn't find out till the 2nd of August. August. Many of the members voiced their opinions to King. The thing is, what are you going to do with the senior citizens of this bloody town in the meantime? Where are we going to go to bowl? King said another venue was being sought for the club, but members felt the meeting got them nowhere. If they come to us in, at the end of this month and say this is the building and it's, we think it's suitable, we'll go and have a look, and it is, and we can say, right, we'll put the green down and we'll go. But until he tells us where these buildings are, anything he said today is not acceptable. Club members have already started a petition and say they will continue to fight the council's plans. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. A wood pigeon at Lake Wapuri was shot by an air rifle and left to die on Tuesday. Project Kiriru Nick Harings rushed to the bird to the, to the project headquarters after finding it by the lake. The bird was taken for an x-ray at St Kilda Veterinary Centre where it was discovered to have been deliberately shot. Amanda Salt at the Department of Conservation says the person responsible could be fined up to $100,000 or be sent to jail. It's an offence under the Wildlife Act 1953. Um, Kereru are absolutely protected wildlife um, and we take this uh, matter such as this extremely seriously. An examination revealed the Kereru was missing flight and tail feathers and had a fractured right wing. The bird was later euthanised. South Dunedin has acquired a new library and community centre. Amongst the crowd present at the opening today was reporter Rudy Adrian. Dunedin's new pop-up community hub on Hillside Road was filled to the gunnels for the official opening today. The ribbon was cut by former city councillor and librarian Anne Turvey, who has been campaigning for a new library in South Dunedin for dozens of years. A Kapahaka group from nearby Bathgate School performed several numbers to an appreciative crowd. The school's principal, Katrina Robertson, welcomes the addition of a community hub in South Dunedin. I think it's um, a very worthwhile project 
to be doing. There's uh, so few places for the youth to be able to go and hang out in and that's safe and secure and gives them a sense of community. And the hub is actually going to provide um, internet access that's going to have books in a local area for them that them and their families can get together. As well as that, it's going to be a place that they can go and just hang out in and they're going to um, you know, be looked after and be secure. She also pointed out the temporary nature of the pop-up hub was not a bad thing. By having the pop-up hub it gives time for the community and the people that are using it to actually identify just is everything being catered for, is there anything else that is needed or what needs to be extended, what, um, what isn't needed. The new community hub is open on Hillside Road Tuesdays to Fridays from late morning to late afternoon as well as Saturday morning. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Advanced voting in the 2017 general election opens on Monday. There are 485 advanced voting places around the country, up from 295 in 2014. The Electoral Commission says the first easy vote packs will start arriving in voters' letter boxes from today, with 3.16 million being delivered over the next week. Easy vote packs have been sent to all voters who are enrolled before the 23rd of August and include a personalised easy vote card, which makes voting quicker. A full list of advanced voting sites is available at www.elections.org.nz. A slip from a building site closed Lakeside Road in Wanaka for most of today. Rock, mud and gravel slid slowly across the road above the Wanaka Marina overnight, eventually blocking the road. The slip came from the site where a multi-million dollar apartment development is being built. Marina Terrace Limited General Partner Matt Tuck says more than a hundred locations around the site had been profiled in preparation for the earthworks. But he says some localised works caused an area to weaken and subside onto the road below. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, the ice plates showed the Australian's mighty Royce, who's the boss of the ice last night, and we look at a workshop run in Invercargill today aiming to improve the connection between business owners and their communities. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. If you're staring at empty walls, stare no longer. The Dunedin Art Show has arrived. Visit Dunedin's largest ever art show and take part in Otago's Art Sales Event of the Year. View and buy original artworks from established and emergent New Zealand artists. Thousands of artworks priced from $50. Opening night gala Thursday the 21st of September with show days from Friday the 22nd to Sunday the 24th from 10am at the Edgar Centre Anderson's Bay. Visit the DunedinArtShow.co.nz for tickets and more info. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road, visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. Hi, Lindsay here from Ellis Campbell Menswear. Just think, 80 years ago, this year, my grandfather set up Ellis Campbell Menswear right on Cargill's Corner in South Dunedin. We've had some great years bringing Otago and Southland the very best of menswear for both business 
and everyday needs. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Feel the soothing effects of sunny chins, back manipulation and crystal therapy. One hour half price special for the month of September. Normally $110, now $55. Book your session today. The University of Otago, an institute of world-class education and the social epicenter of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the ones in the zoo. <laughs> Channel 39 brings you a New Zealand rail scene special, Tons of Grunt, a four-part special, looking at diesel locomotives today. Tons of Grunt, Sunday evenings, 8.30, repeating Wednesdays, 8.30. Welcome back. The Ice Blacks showed who is the boss of the ice by beating Australia's mighty ruse last night. New Zealand's national ice hockey team won a tough and aggressive match by four goals to one. The three-match test series has been held at the Queenstown Ice Arena as part of the Winter Games. This is Queenstown's first time hosting international ice hockey matches between the two sides, who will be back competing on the ice tonight at 7 o'clock. Sports Southland run a workshop in Invercargill today to improve the connection between business owners and their communities. About 60 people attended. Sharon Rees was there. Megan Courtney is passionate about inspiring people to work with their communities. That's why she was chosen to lead the conversation on community-led development and inspire business professionals. Sports Southland's Gareth Scott says the workshop, Activating Communities, was designed to demonstrate the opportunities a community-led approach can create. So this is just a really good chance to get a whole lot of um, people together from different agencies around Southland, Targo, Queenstown, um, to better understand community-led development, so um, to better understand the communities, to work alongside those communities and to do some really great things. The 60 people involved in the workshop were given books to work from and speakers were constantly interacting with participants. So the walls behind you are some flip chats. Scott says the workshop could make a big difference. If we all leave today learning a couple of things around community lead development, these, um, it's going to make a huge difference in our, in our own community. A second workshop will be held tomorrow focusing on volunteer-based community development. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. The multi-million dollar refit of Dunedin's historic courthouse got the once-over from Justice and Courts Minister Amy Adams yesterday. The sitting minister signed off on the project and this was her second visit to the site. Taking a tour through the halls of justice. Sitting Justice and Courts Minister Amy Adams says neglecting this grand piece of architecture was never an option. There was no question for me that we had to do whatever we could to, to maintain it, make it safe, keep it in its original form and bring the court services back, mm. uh, obviously as well. There was some discussion you know, before I became the Minister about the options like removing the tower and the like, yeah. but it just seemed to me that that would be a, a tragedy uh, on a building yeah. like this. Adams says it is an extensive and expensive project that needed to be done properly. She hopes when all the work is completed, it will look like nothing has been done. Mm. As you would have seen, there's a lot of handcrafted workmanship yeah. in there. It's not a simple box build. Mm. Uh, a lot of hand-carved stonework, a lot of handmade lead lights, yep. uh, and just the design to make sure that the, um, the original historic feel is maintained. Mm. And when the building's finished, uh, as I was saying, I think people will walk through and feel like it's almost hasn't, hasn't had anything done. Yeah. But the advantage of going through on days like today is you get to see how extensive the work is to, mm. to keep it safe, to make it structurally sound, to make it workable for a modern court. Minister Adams is proud the government she was part of has undertaken a complete refitting and earthquake strengthening of this building. Darrell Baser, The South Today. 
After the break on the South today, Tyrell Lomax, who played Super Rugby at Prop in 2017, has committed to the Highlanders for 2019 and 2020 seasons. And we catch up with the world champion Black Ferns rugby team. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second-hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book-loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Feel the soothing effects of sunny chins, back manipulation and crystal therapy. One hour half price special for the month of September. Normally $110, now $55. Book your session today. generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's pies are distributed throughout the lower South Island. Jimmy's pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. The Gate Hospitality and Tourist Centre is a standout attraction of Cromwell and Central Otago for travellers and locals alike. Featuring the Harvest Hotel which is Central Otago's gateway accommodation featuring standard and premium rooms which open onto breathtaking mountain, vineyard and rural views. The Harvest Hotel also has a relaxing sun-trapped courtyard and standalone conference and wedding centre. The Hunting Lodge themed Five Stags Bar and Restaurant provides an honest, welcoming, family-friendly place to grab a great feed and a relaxing beverage. Forage Information Centre and Cafe is light and spacious and serves fabulous food and bedazzling beverages and offers information and booking services. In every season, for every reason, the Gate Hospitality and Tourist Centre has something for everyone. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. Just think, 80 years ago, this year, my grandfather set up Alex Campbell Menswear right on Cargill's Corner in South Dunedin. We've had some great years bringing Otago and Southland the very best of menswear for both business and everyday needs. Channel 39 brings you a New Zealand rail scene special, Tons of Grunt, a four-part special looking at diesel locomotives today. Tons of Grunt, Sunday evenings 8.30, repeating Wednesdays 8.30. Thanks for staying with us. Tarai Lomax, who played Super Rugby at Prop in 2017, has committed to the Highlanders for 2019 and 2020 seasons. The 21-year-old is still under contract to Australian Rugby for another year, but has committed his long-term future to New Zealand. Tyrell Lomax is the son of former Kiwis Rugby League prop John, John Lomax, who played 15 tests for the Kiwis between 1992 to 1998. Highlanders CEO Ro Roger Clark says he fit, will fit in well with the Otago and Southland-based franchise. The Americans trumped the rest of the field in the women's half-pipe snowboard World Cup finals at the Cadrona Alpine Resort today. 
17-year-old American Chloe Kim beat fellow American 34-year-old Kelly Clark by two and a half points. In the men's event, Japanese rider Yuto Tutsuka put on a supreme performance to lock in the top spot and win gold. Tutsuka finished one point ahead of winter Olympic silver medalist Ayu Muzhuano. And today's halfpipe was the final event at the year, this year's Winter Games at Kadrona. The annual under-15 girls rugby tournament has been held in Dunedin this week. This year, 14 teams are taking part and are receiving encouragement from the World Cup winning Black Ferns. Roselle LeBone caught up with the team at Hancock Park. Beautiful. Taking home this cup, the Women's Rugby World Cup, is the goal for these aspiring rugby stars. Today they're here at Hancock Park getting tips and tricks from some well-qualified mentors. I'm Roselle Le Bone. The Black Ferns took New Zealand to victory over England two weeks ago in the Women's Rugby World Cup final. Now for the first time since their win, the World Cup is here in Dunedin. Three Black Ferns caught up with the under-15s at the park, home of the Pirates Rugby Club. So I started at Alambra Union, under 10 schoolboys, and then came to Pirates when I was 14 and played the women's comp. Despite dominating international women's rugby, the Black Ferns do not have full-time professional contracts or receive salaries. We've had to balance both work and training, and when it comes time to paying for the Black Ferns, um, regardless of being paid, you know, we go out and, and give it our all, but, um, you know, it would be, it'd be a great opportunity if, um, you know, the women were to be able to be paid um, to play the sport that they love. But these young women are leading the charge for the future of professional rugby in New Zealand. I reckon it's just the same as boys. They're a little tougher, the girls. Because normally the boys think it's just a boys game, but, like, every sport is for everyone. Fourteen schools are taking part in the tournament and even some male players turned up to scope out the competition. They're pretty good, eh? Yeah. yeah. Mayor Dave Cull has invited the Black Ferns to Dunedin for a public victory parade. The players have not confirmed <laughs> when they will be back, but for now the World Cup is still Dunedin's Cup. Roselle Le Bone, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Members of the Invercargill Citizens Bowling Club marched to the City Council to fight for their club today as they're facing the loss of their hall. South Dunedin has acquired a new library and community centre which was open today with cultural performances including Bathgate Park School. And a slip from a building site caused closed Lakeside Road in Wanaka for most of today. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Barry Stewart. Hello, Melissa. Um, yes, you've you've scooped us on the um, on the slip uh, on Lakeside Road uh, in Wanaka. We'll have more uh, on that story. Um, it will. It is going to be uh, the road is going to be closed overnight. So um, so there's some work to do there yet. So while one road is closing, another is opening. Uh, Highcliffe Road is uh, set to reopen on Monday. Highcliffe Road has been closed since. 2015 from the, from the big, the big a, rain there. Yeah. Um, 1.5 million dollars worth of work uh, has uh, been undertaken so now it is up and running so uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, so they can get out maybe tonight if there's an aurora and go and check it out? <laughs> no it's still not open. Oh, uh, Monday. Not Monday. 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 You just have to take it easy and wait until Monday. <laughs> In a business profile on our business pages which is the obvious place to look for business profiles. Uh, we look at the growth of uh, Havoc Farm Pork. Um, so they're a, a emerging growing uh, outlet. You can catch, catch them at the farmer's market, actually. But, Very tasty. Um, I've been indeed, quite partial. Indeed. So in Weekend Mix, we have a full store of, of good stories there. We uh, have a political um, uh, taste. We uh, Whatever Bruce Munro poses the question, whatever happened to the lunatic fringe, uh, he surveys uh, the seeming demise of small party politics in New Zealand and asks what it all means. So uh, read that uh, story in, at the weekend, it's a good one. Shane Gilchrist, uh, also in the weekend mix, goes behind the scenes at the 50th anniversary Larnock Castle Ball, which is going to be held uh, in Dunedin on, on Saturday night. So uh, a big event there. 
be fantastic. Um, I'm sure there'll be some fantastic well, outfits. Oh, exactly. All the uh, the uh, coat and tails and uh, and everything else, and the top hats, and uh, and where we go. So uh, that'll be an interesting occasion. Uh, of course, week big weekend of sport. Um, All Blacks playing Argentina. Uh, on Saturday, we'll preview that. We'll also preview the Otago match. Uh, oh, and who the, do you think is going to win? The All Black game? Yeah. Who do you think? <laughs> I just had well, I think, I think the All Blacks will win convincingly. Well, they haven't made a number of changes, but uh, we'll see. That'll, uh, well, obviously there has been some changes. Seven so. changes they made, so um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, Argentina also made a number of changes, so... I don't know what we're going to get. Oh. An entertaining match, hopefully. So, yeah, hopefully. Uh, look out for that. Um, also preview the Otago game. They're playing in Napier, so looking for a win there. Uh, we also look at all the action from the Winter Games that's been held in our region. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for Thank that, you. Barry. And you'll have to read that in tomorrow's ODT. And now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. Weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Collagen Plus. Today's southern view is of two historic buildings on Dunedin Stewart Street. Looking at the situation, a depression will develop tomorrow with a very cold southwesterly airstream spreading over the South Island on Sunday and Monday, bringing snow and hail to low levels in southern districts. To the southern outlook, Balclutha and Catlin, showers and 9, Gore and Lumsden can expect southwesterlies, rain and 8 degrees. To the central outlook, you can expect rain everywhere there. Alexandra showers and 10 degrees, Queenstown and Wanaka at showers and 9 for both of you and Tiana will have rain and 8 degrees. Travelling up to the northern outlook, Omaru and Timaru some cloud and 12, inland at Amarama and Twizel will be showers and 9 degrees. Here in Dunedin tonight, fine with westerly winds with an overnight low of 7 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny periods at first with northerly winds and high cloud increasing during the day. Some rain developing at night, 11 and 5. And it's cloudy on Sunday with rain turning to showers. Watch out for the likelihood of sleet and snow flurries to 200 metres on the hills. Southerly winds becoming strong and very cold, 7 and 3. So don't pack away your winter woolies yet. And in Invercargill tonight, showers clearing and westerlies decreasing with an overnight low of 6 degrees. Tomorrow dry with high cloud increasing in northerly winds. Some rain developing that night with colder southerlies. 11 and 3 degrees and you have wintry showers on Sunday too with some sleet and hail likely. Cold southwesterly winds, 11 and 3 degrees. A good night for a good day for movies on Sunday. And that's our news for this Friday. For the latest news from the southern region, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. And we leave you tonight with some scenes from the week that was on the South Today. Hope you all have a great weekend. Goodbye. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. 
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.